audience and also those that are tuning in and uh, live streaming with us. Welcome to Carver Road Church of Christ or the Church of Christ that meets at Carver Road. Let's put it like that. Uh, we'd like to welcome you with our worship service this morning. By way of announcement, just have a few. The first one is let us please keep Brother and Sister Carruthers and family in prayers in the passing of Brother Sister brother sister Carruthers aunt sister Carruthers aunt passed so let us keep the Carruthers and the family in prayers country club drive church of christ which is in fifth uh they have a vacation their vacation bible school starts june the 28th through the 30th We'll get you more information. They have a flyer that they sent us. Uh, we'll get that inf more information to you as that date approaches. The Winston-Salem Portrait Project. The City of Winston-Salem Public Art Commission is sponsoring sculptural photos <coughs> and stories of people from all over the community. Our own brother, Bobby Robot, permanently with, would be exhibited at the Winston-Salem Lake YMCA. Brother Robot is a visual artist and photographer. For a lifetime currently, the sculpture is exhibited at, the Winston, at Winston Square uh, downtown. And our own brother Black uh, is one of the people that was on the committee that submitted this. The panel, we've been having a, uh, there's been a panel discussion every Wednesday. The next one will be held on May the 19th. I think in the bulletin, uh, it has one name, but Brother Harold Reed will be the uh, presenter on May the 19th. That's Wednesday. Instead of the one in, we got listed in our bulletin, I was informed that Brother Harold Reed would be the one doing the presenting at that time. This is all the announcements that I have in the folder. But I'd like to remind us we are the body of Christ. Let us carry him in our lives, not only here, but out there also. Let us be mindful and compassionate with one another and also with people that we come in contact, contact with daily. We don't know what kind of issues that they're dealing with. So let us be mindful of who we are, so we won't get caught up on who they are. With that being said, it's now time for us to start our worship service. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep solemn and be for him. Today's invitation is taken from Psalms 148. We'll be reading from verse 1, 2, and 3. That's Psalms 148, <clears throat> verse 1, 2, and 3. <clears throat> Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you allow us to assemble here today. You also allow us to rise. See you another day. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all who are here at this time. And we just thank you, Father, for allowing us to be in your service just one more time. And Heavenly Father, now we just thank you for our songs and our prayers. And our message, may they be a blessing to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Camping toward Canaan's land. I will leave this land. 
Starting at the first verse through the sixth. I'll be the reader and you as the church. And it reads. And I stood upon the sands of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his, his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blessing. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his daily wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And to him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed his God, who blasphemed his name and his talents, and them that dwell in heaven. Father in heaven, we trust that you will deliver your children from the of those in your forces. We pray that you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the mighty God. Yield not to temptation more. Yield it. Yeah. 
There is much that we can learn from him, Father, and we're praying that as we lead in this nation, in our lives, and in our families, that as we strive to teach so others could do better, that we look to your son for inspiration, and that we continue to follow in his footsteps and to do your will your way. We give you thanks for all of these things, and we're praying for all of these things. In his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we do pray. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. So why don't you ask the Savior to help you but strengthen and keep you? Oh, yes, he will do it.
new member of Brothers, Brother, Brother Jones, Brother Carter for their inclusion this morning, as well as Brother Jones for uh, prayer uh, on this morning and our uh, early scripture reading. We're just thankful to everybody who participated, but particularly and especially uh, for all of the members who've come to get, uh, together today and to give God praise. Uh, I think you would agree that he's worthy, is he not? He's worthy of all the things that we can give him. Somebody said, we've heard it so many times, he's better to us than we are to ourselves. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he's better to us than we know to be to ourselves. And we're thankful to him that in spite of ourselves, he continues to be good to us. It's just good to know there is a God. There is a God who blesses the lives of every one of us. I want to say to our guest on this morning, uh, we're happy that you stopped by this way and that you joined us in praise on this morning. And we trust uh, that something will be said today that will help you uh, to draw closer to God, to be nearer uh, to God, to do those things that are pleasing uh, before Him. Things are moving along uh, in this country. We're thankful for that. Uh, I understand that uh, social distancing uh, is becoming less of a requirement as far as the uh, footage is concerned. If they, it was up to nine feet at one time. Most people were recognized at six feet. And now with children, it's three feet. And on Delta, you can sit in every seat uh, on the uh, on the plane, they're the last ones that, uh, you know, when you fly, you have those middle seats, and they're the last ones uh, to eliminate uh, the middle seat distance. And so now, if you're going to fly, uh, you're going to have someone near the window, someone on the outside, and someone in, in the middle. Uh, and if you just have to, don't look like you're scared when you get on, on the flight. Just, just trust God. Just trust God. You've got a whole lot of things going on anyway. You, you don't have any feet on the ground. You're up in the air, 30,000 feet. You're sitting next to somebody in the middle of the plane. You, you just got to trust God uh, while you're up there. And uh, so continue to do that. Now, of course, we would encourage everybody to practice the safety, uh, not to, especially when you're out there uh, in the uh, world. Uh, some people, they only want to practice safety when it's about church. But uh, we got to practice safety when you're out there in the uh, world. And I have to say that we're thankful that God blessed us and we thank the members uh, who practiced safety all of last year. Uh, you didn't come here sick and spreading uh, anything. You stayed home when you had, had a fever. Uh, you stayed home when you had a headache. Uh, you stayed home when anything. It, it was like old time, wasn't it? Uh, you just, just stayed home. But we're thankful for that and uh, on this morning and, and we were able and we're still praising God for this. We were able to meet every Sunday through the uh, pandemic. We've been here and we're thankful to God for that. I told you, you already know for yourself, he's good, isn't he? He's good to us and we're thankful to him for that. I've been talking about for the last three weeks, the family as we lead up to one of the high days in the religious world uh, when it comes to Sunday or next Sunday. You know, that is Mother's Day, right? Mother's Day, you better go and you better do right on Mother's Day. Uh, it's, it's Mother's Day and a lot of people recognize Mother's Day. I, I'm going to say something profound uh, here uh, right now. No one of us gets here without a mother. Uh, hey, amen. What's that profound? Did you just learn right there now? Uh, no one of us gets here without a, a mother. And that, that's not something to argue about. That that's not uh, something to debate about. You don't have to. You don't even have to take a course on that. You can learn that at home. Nobody gets into this world without a mother. And so we're thankful for our, our mothers. Now a little later on in the year, about a month or so after that, it'll be Father's Day. But who cares? But, but, <laughs> usually the attitude. <laughs> okay. And yeah, we, we just, just hope that uh, the, the men get a chance uh, to uh, be recognized later on in the year if the Lord uh, says the same. I'm going to read reading again from Genesis chapter 21, verses 17 uh, through 19. Genesis 21, 17 through 19. Then the Bible says, And God heard the voice of the Lamb. Did you see that? You read that? God heard the voice of the lad. And all the lad was doing was crying. And you need to know 
God can hear your cry. And God heard the voice of the Lamb, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the Lamb where he is. Arise, lift up the Lamb, and hold him in thine hand. For I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. There's a lot that is occurring in this text. I want to continue with the thematic question, what is family? And I want to talk about today God's love accommodations. And I should say at this point that we must remember that God is big enough to love everybody. Did y'all hear that? God is God enough to love everybody. Now that may not be an overwhelming thought to you, but when one considers this truth, that, that God loves everyone in spite of how wicked any one of us is. God loves everyone despite how dark we have thought and conducted ourselves. God loves us when other folk have given up on us. You ever had somebody get through with you? And I say what I'm fond of saying that no one of us can do so horribly and so bad. No one of us can sink so deep or get so far out there that the love of God can't reach us. Now, I've talked to some people who really have thought there were some bad dudes and some bad women, and they would explain to me, no, you just don't know what I've done. You don't, you don't know what you've done. I, I, I've killed people. I, I've sold drugs. I, I've lied to my mama. And, and you can't do enough to escape the love of God. Somebody may have told you that you're bad, but you're bad self. But you don't get so bad that the love of God can't reach you. And I, and I believe we need to remember, as members of the body of Christ, never to give people the impression that they are so horrible and they've done so much dirt that a relationship with God is impossible for them. Anybody can come to God. And everybody should come to God. Because nobody in life is ever going to do you better than God already has done. Somebody says, well, what has he done for me? You're awake today, aren't you? You're breathing today. You are thinking today. All of that comes from God. And he's doing it for you even when you don't recognize that it is him. Thank God for who God is. One of the places where he demonstrates his love is in, is in family. What we have as family. And I know sometimes people think that they... They've had the worst family, but God intended family to be a blessing. Jesus is portrayed in some of the most compassionate family scenes known to man in the Bible. Perhaps none so illustrative, illustrative than his association, and his associating his mother with one of his disciples, the beloved disciple, the beloved, beloved apostle John. He says to John, Behold your mother in John 19 and verse 27. This is while he's hanging on the cross. Disciples know that this is really the mother of Jesus, but Jesus in his consideration for his mother and the truth that he's going to be leaving his mother says, Behold your mother, and to his mother, behold your son. Whatever there is love within a family, we witness God's love for humanity. God is the one who we know as the father of humanity. God is father, listen, in every home, with every earthly father, with every earthly mother, with every son, with every daughter. God is right there in the home. God provides us a great gift when he provides us the blood ties we experience among our own. Some of y'all are blood king, right? You don't have to confess it, but I can tell by the way you look, you're related to one another. 
It's good to have family members and, and to have that blood kin and so forth go so far as the same thing like, you know, blood is thicker than water. And I want to say sometimes blood is different, thicker than blood. Amen. But God gives us family to, to bless us. And, and everybody, just in your mind, take a moment and thank God in your mind for your family. Thank you, God, for giving me my family. There are some, however, some families have, but that are made to feel as if their families are less significant, unimportant, non-reflective of the glory of God. We must remember in the church to always impress upon everybody that God loves your family regardless of how your family is constructed. We must share good news with the families of humanity. God loves, again, all mothers, all fathers, all sons, all daughters, and wherever one is along the family spectrum, the child of God should celebrate the understanding that God wants the best for all families. I say he wants the best for all families. God is a family provider, not only for those families we have often envisioned as the idea, unless the idea is within the understanding we bring it from the Word of God. People just talk about the nuclear family. And the nuclear family would be a father and a mother, two and a half children. Uh, I guess that other half was the one we denied. A dog and a cat and perhaps a goldfish. And unless you have the mother and the father and the children and the pets, your family was not considered ideal. We should know that God is with families where both father and mother are present, but he's also with those families where the husband and wife have not entered into the matrimony. That is, the father may not, the husband may not be there, or the wife may not be there, the father may not be there, the mother may not be there. God still loves that family. He blesses the father, the mother, and the children. But it's not true teaching to teach that God only blesses families where there is a father and a mother. I want you to just understand this. God blesses all families. Whether it's a two-parent home or a one-parent home, God blesses all families. Let me say that again. I don't know if you get this. God blesses all families. Sometimes people say, well, my family's not best. Blessed. My mother's not there. My, my father's not there. My brothers and sisters that hate me. God is the source of the blessing of all families. God is present for the parent who is rearing a child alone and has never been married. God is there. God is present for the parent who is rearing a child and is divorced or widow. God is there. God is present for the man who has reared his child without the help and support of a mother, God is there. God is present for every mother, every father, every son, every daughter. Thank goodness for how good God is. And I'll tell you again, he treats us better than we treat ourselves. God is present for the family where, where there has been fornication, even adultery. God is there. God is present and loving for the child who has been disregarded, banished, counted out, and deemed a menace to society. As bad as any child is, God still loves that child. Did y'all hear that? Yes, I said, well, he's in prison. She's on drugs. She, she's cut somebody. I want you to understand the God of heaven still loves everybody. And that's signal to the church for us to remember that we are about sharing the love of God with everybody. The child of God need not view the statements about God loving everybody as, as wishful thinking. Scripture reveals the, the very truth we acknowledge in these observations of the family. And, and here's what, what I'm saying is even though your family is not all good, and as long as you're dealing with imperfect individuals, no family will be perfect, right? No family is perfect. No one of us is perfect. Sometimes we get messed up because we're looking for perfect people and perfect families. You're not going to find perfect people and perfect families. So you might as well get them off of that. That's not going to happen. Well, if God's so good, what about? No, all families got their problems. But above your family, thank God for who he is. Remember, it takes 
God to keep us right. He takes God to keep us together. We love to practice in humanity with one another. We fight all over the globe. They announced that the that, that, uh, United States is pulling out of Afghanistan and so forth in Afghanistan. And they came over there. They can't wait till the United States is gone. They already blowing up each other. That's the way we treat each other. All over the globe. There's no perfect family. I want you to understand this. There is no perfect people on this earth. Of whatever ethnicity, there are no perfect people. You know, one of the, I forget who it was, stood up and talked about this country was nothing before. Uh, it was settled by Europeans. He was being very ignorant. He said there's no, nothing here, no culture here. They're not creating anything. That, and the truth is, y'all came and destroyed a lot of stuff. The truth is, to further that, the, the early settlers, if you knew history, they, they couldn't make it unless those who were here showed them how to make it. They sent folk over here and they had a medicine and they freeze to death. Couldn't find a single one, didn't know what to plant, didn't know how to plant it, didn't know how to survive. Now, that's one side of it. That is, they needed the help of another people. What we call indigenous or native, native Americans. But the other side of it is when we glamorize an ethnicity as if they are innocent and they are not duplicitous in, in evil. It doesn't matter what continent people are on, people have always had an inclination not to do right. It doesn't matter whether you're Asian, African, European, wherever you're from, people will do evil to each other. That's true from the very beginning. God began the family with a man and a woman who he tasked to be fruitful and to multiply. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. And these two, though evicted from their first home, became the parents of two boys, Cain and Abel. Genesis 4, 1 and 2. From the beginning, however, there is trouble in the home. And let us understand that as long as there have been family, there has been the necessity of having God in the family. When we forget God, our families suffer. The first family had the best addressed man would ever know. And got evicted. Amen. Eviction did not start in the United States. God evicted Adam and Eve. These are the folk he created. But then further, the first bad children came from a two-parent home. Amen. Cain had both his mother and his father. We, we like to think, well, these bad children, they come from single parent home. Well, the first bad child doing the evil came from a two parent home. He had parents that talked to God. God walked with them, created them, breathed into their nostrils the, the breath of life. They were the parents of Cain. And Cain ended up killing his brother. You know, we've been acting up in the same I'm talking about humanity. I'm talking about us. Perfectly created. But it wasn't that long before Adam and Eve. And last week, just to repeat, Adam and Eve, when they got in trouble with each other, they didn't, they didn't have the option of going to the divorce court. Filing for divorce. Adam didn't say, well, I'll never work for you again. You'll never get another dime with anything I do. Eve didn't say, go sleep under there, sleep over there, under that bush, don't touch me. <laughs> no, they had to get beyond, like I said, you, in life you got to get past some stuff. Yes, and I know in this country we, we are great at telling folks to hang on to stuff, hang on to your hurt, hang on to your pain, never forget. Now, we need to understand, as long as you're hurting on, hanging on to your pain, hanging on to your misery, Every trouble you have ever had, you'll never be free enough to reach what who you can be in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To learn to let some stuff go. Yes, Ball down by poor memories and bad things and bad people. Get over them like you got to get over yourself. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. You know you have to get over yourself. Yes, you forget yourself every time you look in the mirror. I knew I should have lost it. 
But you forgive yourself and you go on. Some of y'all are forgiving yourself when you try to get in your clothes right now. It won't fit. And you know who to blame, brother. It's the pandemic. No, it's the pancakes. <laughs> the desserts and the sodas. And the snacking and the macking. But you forgive yourself. Doctor like told you last year, get up all that salt. You got high blood pressure. You walk in the doctor's office, talking about 170 over 110. You know you're in trouble. <laughs> we have to forgive ourselves, and we know that some things about ourselves we just can't help, can we? You you can't help the way your eyes are situated on your face. Can't help that. I'm telling you, not just that. There's some stuff going on, but especially those who are older. Some stuff you just can't help. You'd like to help the fact that your hair will stay up there. Amen. <laughs> you, know, you tell yourself every while, well, but I can't find it. Amen. Every time I look at it, it's even less. Don't we forgive ourselves? Y'all remember when we had a head full of hair? Y'all remember that? Afro clothes and all that. Afro shade. Hair everywhere. Now you got a raisin and some shaking cream. <laughs> we can't help it. You can't help growing old, can you? I was thinking the other day, I got up and said, Why well, can't I get up feeling what the heck? I used to get up and did nothing hurt. Remember that? No toe didn't hurt. Angles didn't hurt. Knees didn't hurt. Shoulder didn't hurt. See, like I got a perk. Uh, a permanent hurt right here, Johnny. <laughs> you can't help some stuff. Now, I, I, not a lot of young people, I'm telling young, young people, you are going to run across some stuff in life you can't help. I'm so glad my uncle told me about 30 years ago, he said, you know, the corona, they got big stomachs, so I don't have to feel guilty. Yeah. <laughs> So we love it. This is genetic. No, <laughs> this is dragging the meat off the bones. Is what that is. <laughs> but, but, Cain came from a home with a mother and a father. And, and, and this underscores the truth. You know, as close as Adam and Eve were to God, they still sinned. As well as they knew God, they still did wrong and God wants us to understand he, un he knows that we do wrong what he wants us to understand is this is the reason we need to acknowledge that we need him in our lives because there is no forgiveness unless God forgives us and there is no forgiveness unless Jesus sheds his blood because only the blood can cleanse us from our sins and give us relationship with God again just thank God for how good he continues to be to us The Bible says, even after then, after Cain killed Abel, the Lord, that Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth, for God said she had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, who Cain slew. Genesis 4, 25. This is the first family, the first family, all this trouble in the first family. Now, you, you may tell yourself, I don't have any trouble with my, my family, but... One of the things I'm thankful for my mother for, I, I learned, you know, some folk get in trouble at the school, brother Culver, brother Jesse, y'all know the principals and the better others working with school, y'all. And when a child gets in trouble, says Curry, um, and you call some parents, their response is, what, my child? <laughs> no, what, my child? You got the wrong child. Somebody lying on my child. Y'all remember that? You get the child back in the day recorded back in y'all there, cassette tape. You got the tape right there. <laughs> they videoed it. They it. What's my child? My, my child? I know my child. My mother had eight children. And she let folks, she let us know, and she let them know that my child can do just like any other child can do. Yes. And when someone would say to her, you know, Jeff did such and such a thing, she said, I believe it. <laughs> you know, I, I see the other parents, the other parents be defending them. 
Hold on, that's my child, that's my child, come to my mother. I better get him to trust what he did with child. And I'm like, what kind of betrayer are you? <laughs> And she put us on notice. When you do wrong, don't, don't expect me to interfere with the punishment you get for doing wrong. And you need to know you know better than any other child. So you better conduct yourself right. Because I'm not going to start with this narrative that, no, oh, not my child. You do stick yourself. Jump up. You do wrong at home. Well, what's going to make me think you're going to get out there in public and you're not going to do wrong? Well, your child would put his stuff up on his desk. You know, back in the desk, if he had no desk, you never thought he would put stuff up. Some of y'all was back there, y'all. Go and tell the truth. Some children later, they don't want to put the stuff up. Parents act like they're all surprised and said, child, I'm going to put the stuff up. They go good and well. They can't make their child make the bed at home. But you're shocked if the teacher said you wouldn't put your stuff, stuff in. My mother was saying to him anyway, he can do it now. He may not have done it, but I'm not going to say he could not have done it. That, that's not where I'm going to start. And so they had they have a perfect family. I don't have a perfect family. You don't have a perfect family. And so all of us need to look to God Amen. to be our help. In the event any is prejudiced against families with only a mother or only a father, at this dysfunctional and disadvantage, let us face the reality that the first trouble in a family began when there were both mother and father, both of whom had personal encounters with God the Creator. It is not just important to be in the family, it is equally important to recognize each family as a place where God's love must be accepted. I want to say this to all of us. You need God in your home. And it begins with the acknowledgement that you need God in your personal life. Yeah. I am living without wisdom. And I'm living ignorantly. When I cannot acknowledge, as feeble as I am, that I need God in my life. That's the understanding. That's the thing God wants us to come to. He wants us to realize that without Him, we are nobody and nothing. All of our value and our worth comes as a result of how God sees us. And the text says God loves us. Does God's compassion and love help the family that is far contrary to God's expectations? What we examine no further than the family of God's elect to discover the answer. Bible students remember that Sarah, contrary to God's intention for her family, encouraged Abram to go into Hagar to conceive an heir. Genesis 16, 1 through 4. Now, just as this, this is crazy stuff here. This, this, this ought not happen. But God had told Abraham and he told Sarah, Sarah's going to have a child. I know she's old, but she's going to have a child. Amen. Yeah. I know that a whole lot of old women, they don't want to be bothered with a child. Right? <laughs> There's some younger folk don't want to be bothered with a child. One of the good things about the pandemic is a lot of parents discovered for the first time that everything their teachers were saying about their child was true. <laughs> I've been defending you, I mean, and I see what these teachers be going through. It, it ain't found it out to the pandemic, but they were trying to teach that child what one plus three is. And that child kept on saying seven. When you wake up in the morning, you gotta know what one plus three is. What is it? Seven? Yes, what kind of child? It's your child. Amen. Find out for the first time. What, what, what happened is God told Sarah, Sarah, you and Abraham are going to have a child. And, and, and I guess they were trying and trying. And what no child going? Coming. And so finally Sarah said, well, God promised these to be fulfilled. And maybe God wants to do this another way. So she says to her husband, listen to this man, listen, listen. Sarah said to Abraham, well, we got a serpent here. Go speak with her. Now, Abraham should have had the sense enough to know. This is a garden of Eden. God spoke. Eve said to Adam, here's some fruit eating. Adam, 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 he had a better sense than that. Disobey God. Now, man, you know. <laughs> 
good in the world. Yeah. That if your wife tell you, now I, I can't have a child, and we need a child, there's a young girl in the next door. Go sleep with her. Now, if you take your silly self <laughs> You, you, you don't just look okay. As I said for yourself, I'm not gonna tell you, go sleep with the neighbor. But Abraham, he wasn't thinking about it like that. He, he wasn't thinking right at all. He said, Does my hair look like good? She does look good. I said, Come on, look at that. I ain't going to fight you on this one. It's sad, it's sad. Yes. Oh he goes and he sleeps with her. But here's, here's the problem. When we step in and do stuff like we want to do, yes, we mess ourselves up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listen to God. Life will tell you that this is one of the most difficult situations in the world is that dynamic, the dynamic between men and women, husband and wife. Especially when children get involved. I said this morning at the 8 o'clock hour that when I'm counseling people who are about to be married, young people, and the girl should be so in love with the guy, and the guy will be so in love with the girl, and, 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 and the guy will have two children out there already. And she will say, I don't care about the girl, I just love him all. I just love him. I said, it's good you love him. That's what I'm thinking. You 26, you can have a whole lot of stuff. 26. You think you fine as the as the highest price time and all of that. You think you got it going on, all your hair is still there and it comes out and grows back. <laughs> your shape is like you want it to be. You you could be a cookie cutter for, for all the other ladies. And I'll say, and I'll say that you can handle that right now. <clears throat> But what I'm looking forward to is whether or not you can handle that when you're 46. Yeah. Yeah. So you can handle some stuff as a young lady at 26 that will tear you up at 46. Yeah. Right. You know something about life is a lot of stuff folk do in their 20s. They start trying to correct in their 40s. Yeah. Yeah. Women try to correct the fact that they married this guy. So they tell them, I don't know how I married you. And I, I'm wasting my whole life on you. And you get up, get out of here. And what happens in these relationships with the children involved is sometimes the young girls, they can handle all that until the child gets older. He's 14 or 15, she's 14 or 15, and she starts making demands on her daddy. Or he starts making demands on his daddy. And now he's calling your house during your summer hour and asking daddy, daddy, I'm in the 11th grade now, I need some shoes. Why is he calling you? Well, honey, that's my son. He was your son 20 years ago. He's always been my son. Yeah. She called and talk, talking about, listen, I haven't got a payment from you in the last six years. I'm taking you to court. What's wrong with that? Stuff when you have it on 20, you can't necessarily have it on the forwards. People begin to get penitent when they turn to 40 and the man gets to thinking. I wonder how that child's doing that I haven't had much communication with him for the last eight years. And now you find out he's been on the phone talking to the child's mother because he knows that as a father, that child really is his responsibility. So we do a whole lot of stuff when we're young that we can't handle when we get older. And I'm saying older people, you ought to prepare younger people how, for how life is really going to be. For grow older, they get more mature, they get a better understanding, they're not caught up in the youth anymore, and they want to correct some stuff. So, before her child was born, Sarah thought she could handle Hagar, having Abraham's child. And now Abraham's child is up some age, and Sarah has her, her own child. She's been watching Abraham's child, Ishmael, interact with her, her child Isaac. And here's, here's, here's when the rubber meets the road. Genesis 21, verse 10 and 11. Cast out this bond woman and her son. Get that woman out of my house. 
Anderson, I don't care about either one of them. Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, either with Isaac. And the thing was grievous in Abraham's sight. Abraham was the dad, Sarah was not the mother. Sarah said, you get that woman out this house, and you get that boy out this house. And the text said, that bothered Abraham. And I usually say about this text on Father's Day that we have to teach young ladies that men may not show love for their children the same way women do, but men love their children. You know, men and women interact with children differently, right? I'm not saying anything, right? God has demonstrated that a woman is going to have a closer relationship with that child than the man is just wrestling in infancy. She carries the child nine months. She nurses the child. Of course the child has a different relationship with mother in those early years than she does with father. And I know society would like us to forget all this common, what we call, used to call common and natural sense. But it's the truth of the matter. It, it, it hurt Abraham to the heart for him to put his own son out of the house. But here's where, here's where the praise comes in that we need to remember. And that is just because other folk get through with us, that doesn't mean God is through with us. Amen. Aren't you thankful? Yes. Because others think we are unworthy, that doesn't mean God thinks we are unworthy. Yes, because others want to shine us, that doesn't mean God shines us. Yes, it is certainly true that Sarah is Abraham's wife and is also true that Isaac was a seed that would inherit the promises of Abraham. But one is mistaken if one concludes that Hagar and Ishmael would be left to think for themselves that God would not care for and love them like he cared for Abraham and cared for Sarah and then cared for Isaac. God cared for Hagar and God cared for Ishmael. I say again, God loves everybody and God loves all families. And when we present the church, we need to make sure we present the church that, place, that way. That is, the church is a place where everybody can be accepted yes, by God. Abraham was worried about his son, but we read in the book of Genesis, chapter 21 and 20, that uh, God steps in. And God, the Bible says, was with the lad. See, he was not only with Isaac, he was with Ishmael. God was with the land, and he grew and he dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. He dwelt in the wilderness of Quran, and, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt, Genesis 21, 23, 21. No, Ishmael and his mother were not discarded and ill-treated by the God of heaven simply because Sarah dismissed Hagar. And I say it again this morning, all of us ought to be thankful for the God of heaven. Because though Sarah was through with Hagar, God was not through with Hagar. Your mama may be through with you. Your daddy may be through with you. Your neighbor may be through with you. But thank God, God is not through with you. See, if God had been through with you, you wouldn't be here this morning. And he's not keeping us blessed because we are so good. We're blessed this morning because God is so good. Can I say this again to you? We're blessed because God yes, is so good. Yes, and the question becomes, how do I respond to a God who's that good to me? What we must always remember is that God loves every mother, every father, every son, and every daughter. Yes. Hey God, you're not Sarah, but I love you. Hey God, I didn't make the promise to you like I did to Sarah, but I love you. Sarah, you had the promised child, Isaac, but that doesn't mean I don't love Ishmael. The text says God was with the land. His life was not over because he left the home of his father. His future was not blotted out because he suffered from the bad decisions of adults. His hopeful significance and meaning did not teach, reach a dead end because his mother must rear him by herself. God was with the land. And people, what you want this morning is you want God to be with your children. God to be with your spouse. 
God to be in your family. You want God there. You may tell other folks to stay out your business, but don't you ever tell God to stay out of your business because God is being good to you. God is giving credit with keeping his mother strong. See, she was weak too. She reached the point where she, where she said, you know, God, both myself and my son, just, just let us die. And God had to step in, even when you want to die, and say to you, you got a future. Yeah. And it's all his promise, as long as it's with me. God has given credit for leading his mother to find a wife for him, and he could form the family he was denied. Now, his family, listen, Ishmael's family was torn and broke up. But God turned around and gives Ishmael his own family. Don't ever give up on what God can do for your family yes, and what God can do for you. Yes, His mother was not a wife. She served as Sarah's maid. His mother is not reported to have entered into a loving and lifelong relationship with a marriage partner, but she did not believe her son should be without the joys of committing love for a lifelong spouse and relationship. And parent, let's remember, things that we think that we were deprived of when we, we were growing up, that's no reason to turn around and to deprive our children of the same thing. Somebody says, I, I didn't go to church when I was small. That doesn't mean you need to deprive your children of coming to church. I didn't go to Bible school when I was small and I turned out all right. Did you? If you turned out all right, you'd understand that children are here from the Lord. Right? And the question is, what do you do with God's heritage in your own home? Do you bring your children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? Because you didn't have something in your life when you were growing up, there's no reason not to see those things happening in your child's life. I didn't have all such as that. You had enough to make it to where you are today. And you ought to thank God for it. Let's all acknowledge the truth that God seeks to be with all families. God seeks to guide all families. God seeks to provide for all families. God loves all families. God's desire is that all families know the possibility of families by heeding his instruction. God wants all families to trust that his will and way are best for us all. Now say again. We have been seeing ourselves. We are living ignorantly. We think that we should live our lives without God. And it says something about us. When God can be so good to us. And so good to us. And we turn around and don't have time enough to do what God has commanded and taught us to do. We learn about ourselves by looking at how we treat God. Because if we won't give the most powerful entity known to humanity the time of day commitment and our lives how are we going to relate to everybody else yeah. see if God can't do it for you if God can't bring you to himself if God can't cause you to walk in humility and humbleness, then who can yeah. what happens is I become a standard to myself when I don't recognize where God ought to be in my life. And today a lot of people have not obeyed God because they think they and God are on the same level. But they can just say to God what they're going to do and how they're going to do it and when they're going to do it rather than listening to the God who created them, fashioned them, and loved them in spite of how wrong they may have been in life. I think it's amazing for all of us that in spite of us, God woke us up this morning. That shows you he's not vengeful. He's not contrary. He's not spiteful. He's not waiting for us to do right before he gets right. He's just a good God. So good, again, that it's amazing that he even woke us up this morning. Yes, sir. He didn't have to do it. He did do it. Someone says, I don't, 
I don't believe in eternity. I read something yesterday where they felt, they felt like the scientists felt like they discovered a place in the universe that's a billion years old. You don't believe in eternity, but you believe in something that's a billion years old. But how long did it have to be to be eternity? If you can believe scientifically that humanity or life goes back a billion years, you gotta understand that this little three score and ten that we live in, the former years here in this country, is but a small and insignificant portion of the existence of life at all. Yeah, you believe things go on. You may not want to believe it when it comes to God, but you believe it. And it's before us every day of our lives. And as a preacher, my encouragement is that in the short time you have here, and it's just a short time, don't waste your time ignoring God, walking away from God, because you think God is doing you harm. God is the one who's doing you good. The time you have here, right now in the flesh, ought to be a time when you want God to be honored in your life. Amen. I'm going to tell you something the older preachers used to say. There's nothing going on in your life right now that is more important than your relationship with God. There's no person in your life right now that ought to stand between you and God. Yeah! Want to feel the power of God. Let God speak and you obey. Yeah, I say many times I hear people talk about I want to experience the power. I want to feel the power. I want the power in my life. You know how you feel the power? Let God speak and you obey. That's when you feel the power. That's when you understand it's not about me. It's about God. But a lot of folks, they can hear what God says over and over and over again and never move. And they'll say, God is a weak God. No, it's not God who's weak. He's the one that maintained us and who has the power. Now, as I conclude this morning, what I've said is that in spite of how we do our families, how we do in our families, God still comes into our families and loves everybody in the family. Amen. All families are not husband and wife, father and mother, two parents. But God demonstrates in the life of Hagar that he can get glory out of a woman rearing a child all by herself. And God will bless her children, bless his children just like he'll bless the children of the two-parent home and Adam and Eve who brought up a son by the name of Cain. Which is to underscore the truth this morning. You know how many of us need God? All of us need God. Now here, here, here's some power for you. Here, here's some power for you. You want, you want to please God? You need to come to God by Christ Jesus. By Christ Jesus. Not by human imagination. Not by feelings. Not by, I think it's this way or the other. But you ought to come to God by obeying his word. Amen. Brother Jones was teaching in class this morning, one of those passages there in the early verses of Luke chapter 20. They're asking Jesus, the baptism of John, is it from God or is it from me? What they recognized about religion, even in that day, that what we do in religion either comes from two sources. Either it comes from God or it comes from me. But what authority? And here's what a lot of people don't understand about religion. They see all of these churches out here. With all of these people doing all these things. They don't know. They both don't understand that in the real Bible, when it comes to God, what we practice must have the authority of God. It cannot have the authority of man and be accepted with God. What we practice in religion must come by the authority of God. The authority is the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing 
by the word of God. As a preacher, they ask me, how can you say, folk are not saved who are in this church or the other church? I'm talking about where the authority is. The authority is not in the existence of the church. The authority is in the word of God. If it's not in the word of God, it does not come from God. I really don't have a grasp of why it's so easy for folk to do what men women say to do and can't do what God commands us to do. Here's what God says about salvation. Anybody who's going to be saved is going to come to God through Jesus Christ. Not, yeah, yeah. not by Muhammad. Not by Buddha. Not by Confucius. Not by a system of philosophy. Not by Persian religion. Sorry, Astrianism. Anybody who's going to come to him, God is going to come through Jesus Christ. Faith comes by him. Hearing by the word of God. I am the way, Jesus says. The truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If I'm going to be saved, I hear that Jesus died for my sins, was buried and rose again. I believe that. I repent of the sin that separated me from God because sin separates us from God. I confess that Jesus is Lord and I'm buried in baptism. Acts 2 30, the remission of sins. And I feel the power of God when I obey that. But I reject that. I've shunned God and pushed him out of love. Well, I want I won't really see with God. I want to be right with God. But here's what the word of God says. Do it. Amen. I don't know if I can do that. Well, you don't want what you say you want. <laughs> it's as simple as letting God speak. Doing what God has commanded us to do. You bear any baptism, the Bible says you sent through a minute, Acts 2 38, you said, uh, washed away, Acts 22, verse 16, and you get up and you walk in the newness of life, Romans 6. You're a new creature. You live your life to the glory of God. You acknowledge your life doesn't belong to you, it belongs to God when you're in Christ Jesus. So you live faithful unto death, not live like I want to live, doing what I want to do. God gets his glory only when we make him number one. Amen. He's not a number two God. Amen. Everything must become secondary when it comes to God. Yeah, yeah. Your job can't be first. Yeah. Your family can't be first. Your hobby can't be first. Only God can be first when you're a child of God. God never takes second place. Never is glorified by being number two. Yeah. If I can't make him number one, I can't glorify him. Right. I said again this morning, he's good. Isn't he? yes. If you hear this morning, you're not a child of God, you walk out of his eyes. Confess before these people, you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We bury you in that water of baptism this morning. And you leave your child of God. Amen. If you're a child of God, and God has not been number one. You need to repent and put it in number two. Yes, Ask your brothers and sisters to pray for you. That you live to his glory. If you need to make it known to God, understand and say, the invitation song, come to Jesus. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusted in his grace? This hour are you washed? In the blood of the Lamb, are you washed? Oh, in the blood, yes, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are you garments, spotless, all they white? As to are you washed? In the blood of the Lamb, oh, are you washed? In Yes, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are you gone? Spotless are they white, as though I you was in the blood of the Lamb. Let's get those hands for that. Thank God for Brother Brother what he continues to bring to us each and every Sunday. Uh, at this time, if you have something on your heart, we give you the opportunity to uh, make a statement.
did go to the doctor Tuesday, and so uh, things are just not looking the way that we thought it would look. And so I just want the church to continue to pray for me that there's some part that I'm, and I know God is there and I have my faith, but there are some things that I'm about to just go completely down on. But when you have to deal with what I've been dealing with, and I'm going into the ninth month of my knee. And I, the doctor gave me an injection, two needles, Tuesday when I went in that office. Physical therapy put dry needles in my knees. So I am still dealing with a bunch of pain. And I'm out two more months again before I go see him. So I'm going into the ninth month. And so I know God is there, just like Brother Carrillo said, but right now I'm just dealing with something, and if I didn't have faith, I would not be here early this morning to do the things that I need to do. So still continue to keep me in prayer, still continue to be with me, but I am still dealing with a lot right now with this man. Amen. So I request prayer for me and Aaron and mothers of fathers that lost a child. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Who is that? to, first of all, thank God. Uh, he's been good to me for 36 years. My wife and I, we celebrate our 36th anniversary on Tuesday, so thank God for that. At this time, let's go to our Father in prayer. And I'll have time as well as the two others. Uh, we got to continue to pray for Brother Oliver. He called to me uh, this morning, and he wasn't feeling well. He was uh, sick, so pray for Brother Oliver. As well, uh, Brother Cherry the, uh, from Charlotte, he had hip surgery. So we ask him to keep him in prayer as well. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Father, you've been so good to us. We realize that you've been better to us than we've been to our own selves, Father. And we thank you. We come now, Father, on all those requests that were requested of you this day. Father, we realize that your ears are not dull to the number of requests that was done today. Amen. So we thank you, Father. Father, we come on behalf of the Brother Oliver who's sick this morning. Actually, to touch his body, it returns back to the region for some help. Mm -hmm. Being with Brother Cherry as he had gone through surgery, continue to give him healing power, Father. Mm -hmm. Father, we come on behalf of Brother Amos Lewis. Bless him, Father, as he continues to thank the church for all that he has gone through, Father. His sickness, the loss of his wife. Mm -hmm. Father, we just thank you for comforting him during this time. Father, we come on behalf of Sister Wells. First of all, I'll give you thanks for all you've already done for her. You bless her, Father. You give her the faith that you know, she knows that you are still with her as she goes through this journey. And we thank you, Father, for being with her, Father. Father, we come on behalf of Sister of Brother Jones. He's going to be dealing with some things this week, Father. We ask you to bless him. Allow him to understand, even though he has doubt, you've already fixed the problem. So we thank you, Father. We Father, we come on behalf of Sister, Sister Rodtop. She called, asking for prayer for her family, for her, her friend, her brother, and Father, just for her whole family. You know what the situation is, Father. But Father, we ask you to intervene and take care of that problem. Mm -hmm. Father, Sister Joan gave thanks for the things that she's dealing with that, that have gone transpired in her life and just thanking you for all that you have done for her, Father. Father, we come on behalf of Brother Horton. You know what the situation is, Father. So we ask you to continue to bless her, be with her, and be with and guide and watch over her, Father. Father, there our sister who just requested prayer, Father. First of all, thank you for the, the message, what was, was, was done today. And Father, we just ask you to continue to be in her life, Father. Continue to strengthen her. Continue to let her understand that you're too great to make any mistake. And Father, we just thank you for all those who stood this morning. We thank you, Father, for just being with them, Father. And Father, we thank you for your blessing that you're married. And Father, as we look at marriage, we thank you, Father, for allowing my wife and I to be, to be married for 36 mm -hmm. years, Father. And we continue to give you praise and honor as we continue to go forward and just thank you. And Father, we continue to thank you for your son, Jesus, yes. who died in a cruel death. Mm -hmm. In this prayer we ask, in his name, amen. amen. All right. We are commanded from the first day of the week to lay by and store 
portion of that which the Lord has blessed us with, the preparation of our offering, I'd like to turn your attention to 1 Corinthians, the chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. And I shall read uh, before you. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, that every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. At this time, we give you that opportunity. No tears in heaven, no sorrows given, all will be glory in that land. There'll be no sadness, all will be gladness, when we shall join a happy band. No tears, don't you know there'll be no more tears, tears of that sorrow. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father, we come once again just thanking you for this opportunity to take of this cup, which is taken in reference to the New Testament in thy son's blood. We do this forever, Father in remembrance of thy son, Jesus. In this prayer we pray. In the name of the son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. To all of our members, in preparation of your tender forms, we pass to the center aisles. 
The ushers will come before you at this time to collect them. Living below in this so sinful world, a hardly a comfort can afford. Well, I'm striving along to face temptation. So now tell me where could I go to the Lord? Tell me now where could I go? Can I refuge for my soul? Then a friend to save me in the end. Now tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Now tell me where could I go? Oh, where could I go? And I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. Yeah, Sister Pickles has a friend you've been studying with. You can introduce yourself. 